home, no meat, no bread, no money have I got, yet shall we be merry, hey ho, nobody ho. Hello there everyone. Uh, so I had promised a tour of my ancestor altar and that's what I'm gonna do. I have here the whole thing set up and I'm quite proud of how it turned out. Uh, this table that it's on is actually my coffee table and um, so yeah I've been without a table for a bit but luckily thanks to me covering my hair I had a ton of scarves on hand and that's what this red cloth is is a scarf and then actually the this black one underneath is also a scarf it's way too big actually but it worked fine as tablecloth okay so I'll start at one end and just go around so here I have um, a plate that was actually an engagement gift from my mom that I don't know what to do with but since my engagement fell through many years ago and I thought you know what this plate would be perfect for the ancestors because the sentiments here uh, where does it start uh, two hearts come together joined as one forevermore yeah, that is pretty obviously a, a marriage thing, but I think it works out very well also just in general for the relationship between myself and my ancestors. The re a relationship of bloodlines, I think, works out just as well for this plate, so I was happy about that. Here on either side, I have little costume brooches that belonged to my maternal grandmother, so I put those there. And in back is one of the infamous uh, letters from my grandfather. I have 10 years worth of letters from him, so I put that there as well. In the glass container, all these little chips here are chips of snowflake obsidian that I just happened to have. And I thought that went well for the theme and the evening because I like the idea of snowflake obsidian as kind of the embodiment of the whole yin-yang idea where there's always some light in the dark and always some dark in the light. I think that also went very well for the holiday. Inside along with a candle I have put three stones um, mainly because they were all very similar. I thought they would look well together and then I thought they would also be a good representation of purity, healing, and wisdom. So I have just a quartz point here, a blue calcite, and amethyst. In back again is my picture of my maternal grandfather with my sister and I. We're dressed up all nice so it must be Easter uh, back in the day. On the back of the picture he had written um, time sure flies. Uh, remember with a question mark and time sure flies. Um, he had misspelled sure, which I love because English was not his first language. Um, I have a little wine bottle in back for candles. I have wine here and next to that a glass of water for the ancestors. Very typical of any ancestor altar because water helps to facilitate communion with the dead. Um, and on the sides here, here and here, are my little Nietzsche attempts, and I'm quite proud of them. I think they turned out adorable. The one on the left are my, is, are, how to say that, my maternal, uh, maternal grandparents. That is their wedding photo, and I thought that turned out adorable. The one on the right is actually five of my great-grandfather's brothers and their sister. So I have several pictures of them all together. And then here behind that I have a picture with flowers. I thought the flowers were very adorable. They are a combination of a Day of the Dead bouquet 
and a witch's brew bouquet, both of which I got at the local market. And then I have some branches that I picked up from a um, tree, the a, a large branch, I guess, or a large portion of this tree fell down at one point and I was walking home so I said, well, I asked the tree, can I borrow some branches? And this is what I came home with. So this first ornament here is my great-grandfather and then here is his wife, my great-grandma. And this was, the picture I told you was, I believe, his brother, one of his brothers who died in a war. And this was my maternal grandfather's younger brother. So they all got ornaments. And moving on right along, I have a crystal grid, of course, because I love them. And I made the Vague Vizier, um Viking Compass just out of some cardstock that I had and kids paint <laughs> because I remember I said I wanted to make everything just with what I have on hand and I was finding all sorts of great craft items that I forgot that I had so I was really happy that I did this project and told myself you must use only what you have now the reason I wanted the compass was because actually I resonate really well with a compass compass rose I just it gives me this feeling of always find your way home and uh, I've traveled a lot and family is very important to me so I really thought the compass was a very good symbol of what the entire uh, altar means the crystals on the grid are not set up in any particular fashion for any particular reason I just I didn't so much want to set up a crystal grid although I do love the idea of doing a grid for the ancestors but I I just wanted crystals everywhere I really wanted a bunch of crystals all over this table so that's what I was going for there all right and then here is my completed uh, spirit bottle for my grandparents you may remember this one from my posts last year and forever and a day it has just been the bottle I finally got around to putting this silver cord on it this is one of the quartz points I used for my grandfather's crystal grid that I did for him and this is a piece of aquamarine that I put there specifically because I thought it would go well aquamarine is also known for being a good crystal to use when talking to the spirits. Now initially this wax, the dripping wax here, I wanted to do that in black but I didn't have any black candles. But then I remembered I think I have red and I had two red candles so I did it with the red and I love that I thought of that because I think it goes so much better to the theme of ancestors and honoring the, my family blood uh, than black and this top piece here forever and a day I was looking around for crystal skulls I wanted a little crystal skull to put on top of here but I just could not find one that I liked and so again going with the use what you have thought I went through some old uh, pendants and jewelry pieces and things that I had made and I found this one a marbled black and silver one at Cabochon and I thought you know what that'll work I like it it adds a little pizzazz to the top of the bottle I'm gonna use that so I did all right and then on the side here we have again my great-grandpa's mother and his father with both the 18, I don't know if this is 1880s, 1890s photos and then these black and white photos were probably in the 20s. Most of the pictures that I have are from the 20s and 30s and then this I've had for ages. I've bought it just at the dollar store but I thought it works because it says family and my winter nights incense 
I did put that in there with some hot water, kept it going with the candle, it worked out well. And the two candles on either side, I dressed those as I typically do my ancestor candles, my hearth candle. So I just kept that theme. And another wine bottle, of course. And lastly, oh, this quartz piece here. Isn't this gorgeous? I love this. I found this at the Museum of Nature and Science. And I saw it, I said, that must go on my altar. So, there it is. It's on my altar. Lastly, coffee and cakes for the ancestors. I don't currently have any coffee in there, but I have these scones were what I picked up for um, soul cakes. I used them as soul cakes for last night. And I decided to also complete or almost complete a uh, project that I've had going for ages is a feather feather wand for distributing smoke from incense. And actually I made this handle a bit longer than I intended to, but I like it. I think it turned out well. It's covered up in just black ribbon and this bottom piece is a quartz point. It's not the prettiest because both the quartz and the stick I used for the handle were not even at the bottom, but it's on there <laughs> and I'm happy about that. I still have a couple of small crystals that I want to hang from here that I think will go nicely with it. And the feathers are actually goose feathers that I picked up from the park. Now, you may be laughing right about now, goose feathers. Who uses goose feathers for a, um, for a wand? But um, I actually really love geese. They're kind of annoying at times, but in, you know, some people actually consider geese like the marines of the, of the bird world because they stick together through thick and thin. They do not leave a, at least I've heard, they don't leave a wounded goose behind. <laughs> and they are just really protective of each other, very uh, committed to each other. And again, those are all traits that I think are very important in my life and in my practice. So I thought what better thing to use than goose feathers for this wand. All right, so I have yabbered on for going on 13 minutes now, but here it is, my altar. I'm oh so proud of it. I think it turned out beautifully. Uh, for all of you who put together ancestor altars, I would love to see yours. And thank you again for watching. Talk to you again soon. Bye. Any good thing to make us all merry. One for Peter, two for Paul.